Hello. In this video, we're once again going to consider theoretical ideas that have practical problem-solving importance. Again, thinking about these ideas both algebraically and intuitively with timelines. This video is going to be pretty challenging. Uh, it's real detailed. You've got to be a detail-oriented person, but it's definitely worth it. If you can maybe pause the video at times and think about things that I've just said, that will definitely benefit you. We're going to look at a starred problem, part A of 2.1.27. We're going to derive some identities that are going to relate something that we're used to, present values of annuities immediate, with something that we're not so used to, present values of annuities due. The equality of all these things are the identities that we want to derive. Actually, this last equality is not in the book's problem, but it's important enough that I thought it was worth including, and it's maybe even the most important thing, that all these things equal. Also, before I start, let me remind you that the value of D, the effective periodic discount rate, and that would be an effective annual discount rate if the period happens to be one year, is defined to be if you, say, deposit one in the account at the beginning of the year, earning interest, uh, an effective periodic interest rate of I, it would be the amount of interest you earn to the total ending amount i over 1 plus i. And that's going to mean, if you take the reciprocal of both sides, that 1 plus i over i is the same as 1 over d, and that's going to be useful for us. All right, here we go. You ready? Get yourself psyched up. Let's go ahead and draw a number line. Time 0, time 1, time 2, etc. I am thinking typically about annuities with n payments here, so you might think maybe we need to stop at time n. I'm actually going to go ahead one more period to time n plus 1 because that will be useful for us near the end of the video. What is the income stream? Let's go ahead and start the income stream of 1 at the end of each or each period starting at time 1. N payments. All right. The symbol we're initially most familiar with is this thing right there. That's the present value of this annuity. Uh, thought of as annuity immediate, which means uh, it's evaluated at time zero. So the symbol AN is the present value of this series of payments of one, one period before the first payment at time zero. Let's write this out as a series. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that would be V. First of all, that would be the present value of the first payment plus v squared, that will be the present value of the second payment at time zero, plus v cubed, etc. The last one will be v to the n. What does this symbol represent? That symbol, a and double dot, represents the present value of this series of payments, not one period before the first payment, but instead right away before the first payment, it would be at time one a second before you make that first payment. That's called the present value of this annuity as an annuity due instead of annuity immediate. So this series evaluated at time one is going to be a n double dot. I'm not going to bother writing the i's here because that's going to be understood. So there's an a n. It equals this series. Here's a n double dot. What does it equal? As a series, it would be 1 plus v plus v squared, etc., plus v to the n minus 1. And that is the quickest way to see the equality, the first equality here. If you multiply a n by 1 plus i, v recalls the reciprocal of 1 plus i, and therefore 1 plus i times v is 1, 1 plus i times v squared is v, 1 plus i times v cubed is v squared, etc. 1 plus i times v to the n is v to the n minus 1. And that series, that finite geometric series, is the same as this quantity. It's the present value of these n payments at time 1. Okay, so that verifies this one. And once you realize what a n double dot is, you don't have to think about it in terms of series. You could say, okay, I can take a n and push it in forward in time by one period, multiply it by the growth factor 1 plus i to get 
the present value of the same series of payments one year later, which we're calling AN double dot. Annuity immediate there and an annuity due there. All right, let's verify that both of these things are equal to this next. And that's where this fact will come in handy. Let me go ahead and take this expression, 1 plus i to the times uh, a n, and let me replace a n with its formula that comes from the ge sum of a geometric series, finite geometric series. It's 1, well, this is an i here, sorry. It's 1 minus v to the n over i. If I rearrange a little bit, I can write this as 1 plus i over i times 1 minus v to the n. I see 1 plus i over i is the same as 1 over d. This is the same as 1 over d times 1 minus v to the n, which is the same as 1 minus v to the n all over d. And I have derived the equality, of the present value of the same annuity as an annuity due, finding its value right before the first payment, not a, not a year before, but a second before, so to speak, is equal to this thing right over there. And before I move on, let's just mention a, a, a fortunate coincidence. The present value of an annuity immediate is this thing right here. And notice you have an i in the denominator, and the word immediate starts with i. So that's a nice coincidence. And we have another nice coincidence. This expression is the present value of the same annuity as an annuity due. And hey, the word d starts with uh, the word do starts with D, just like there's a D in the denominator over there. So it's very fortunate that we have that coincidence. All right, I think the next one we'll focus on is the fact that this expression equals these things. The quickest way to see that, actually, is in terms of series. A n minus 1 is the present value of an annuity immediate with n minus 1 payments. That is going to be v plus v squared plus v cubed, etc., plus v to the n minus 1. I'm adding 1 to that. And hey, look, you've got the same series as we had here. You've got the same series as the series for a n double dot. All right. You could think about it with the, simple, the formula that doesn't involve a series as well, but it's a little trickier. You could replace a n minus 1 with uh, 1 minus v to the n minus 1 over i. And then you could add these fractions. You can write it as i plus 1 minus v to the n minus 1 over i. And then do a little rearranging. You can, you can factor out a 1 plus i out of the top and also bring this i down here over here. What are you left with? Well, when you factor 1 plus i out of the first thing here, you're going to be left with a 1. And when you factor out of, out of the expression v to the n minus 1, you're left with a v to the n, because 1 plus i times v to the n is v to the n minus 1. So you can derive the equality with this thing that way, which, which is also equal to a n double dot. But it's a little trickier. It's trickier algebra. All right, the last, oh, I, let me think about this one intuitively, too, before I go into the last one. Uh, in terms of, of the timeline here, why is this expression equal to, ultimately, a n double dot? Well, think about these n minus 1 payments. The present value of these n minus 1 payments, 1 period before the first payment at time 1 is going to be a sub n minus 1. There's n minus 1 payments. We're discounting it back to 1 period before the very first payment. Adding 1 to that and evaluating that at time 1, which is itself 1, gives us the fact that this sum, 1 plus a n minus 1, does in fact equal a n double dot. Okay, That's an intuitive timeline way to think about it. All right, now we're on to the last thing, that this expression is equal to all these things. 
And I think the, the perhaps the quickest way to do that algebraically would be to take this thing and subtract v to the n and show algebraically that you get a n minus 1. And then when you add 1 to both sides, you'll get the final quality here. And again, you can think about it with series or with uh, simplified formulas in, that don't involve series. a n minus v to the n. If you think about it with series, this is v plus v squared plus etc. plus v to the n. That will be a n minus v to the n. Those will cancel. You'll be left with v plus v squared plus etc. The last term being v to the n minus 1. And that indeed is the same thing as a n minus 1. If you want practice confirming it with the other formula for a n, we can do that too. A n is 1 minus v to the n over i. We're subtracting v to the n from this. We can get a common denominator of i and write this as 1 minus v to the n minus i v to the n over i. Out of those last two terms, I can factor out a v to the n, and I'm left with 1 plus i. If I put my subtraction right there, and 1 plus i times v to the n is v to the n minus 1. And that is a n minus 1. OK? So I verified the equality of a n minus v to the n with a n minus 1. Therefore, again, coming back up here, if you add 1 to everything, you get the equality of this with this and with everything else. Let me finish the video by thinking about this last expression in terms of the timeline. And that's where, where we're going to make use of time n plus 1. Let me think about n payments, but starting at time 2. n payments starting at time 2 will have to go to time n plus 1. That's n payments there. If I discount this back in time by one period before the first payment, I label the present value of that a n. All right, how do I relate that to a n double dot here, which is the present value at time one of the series of red payments down here? Well, um, I can add this one to it, essentially. And then I could subtract off the present value of this one, since that, that payment at time n plus 1 is not does not occur in the red series of payments down here. This one does occur at time 1. This one does not occur in the red series. By finding the present value of this series at time 1, adding 1 to it to correspond to that one right there at time 1, and subtracting the present value of this one, which is going to be v to the n at time 1 because n plus 1 time n plus 1 is n periods after time 1. That's an intuitive justification for why this equals this. I add the 1, I subtract the v to the n to get to that. That perhaps was the most confusing part of this, this but it's definitely worth thinking about as you try to solve problems related to these ideas.